Diani. Known for being the best beach destination in Africa, it's one of those places that's on everybody's travel list when they're coming to Kenya. I've been there countless of times and I absolutely love this paradise on the Kenyan coast. In this video, I want to show you my top 10 things to do while you're in Diani. So pack your bags, pack your swimsuit, pick up that sunscreen and let's go to Diani. Hey guys and welcome back to your weekly adventure sing fix. If you're new here, my name is Rajveer Soin and for the past few years I've been traveling through Kenya and Diani is one of those places that I keep going back to time and time again and for good reason. So let's start off with the number 10 of the top 10 things that you can do while you're in Diani. So let's start off really light and that's by taking a stroll on the beach itself. I mean, we're on one of the best beaches in Africa and to truly appreciate its beauty, you need to walk on the white fine sand of Diani Beach. It's so therapeutic, but be warned that you'll be approached a lot by beach boys who will try to sell you things like jewelry, artifacts, massages or boat tours. And if you refuse to buy any of them, they'll go to their last resort. Uh, how can I put this in a way in which I don't get demonetized? Ah, they'll try to sell you cannabis, but you can politely tell them to let you be and they'll leave you alone. If you're taking a walk on the beach during low tide, you can ask one of these beach boys to guide you through and show you some of the marine life that gets left behind in the small pools that are formed. You can get to see things like sea urchins, starfish, little coral and baby fish. Hopefully, if you're lucky, you could see Finding Nemo. It's really fun. And make sure while you're walking on the beach to get yourself some madafu, aka coconuts. It's mwah. Moving on to number nine, which is riding a camel on the beach. Now, during the evening, you usually have vendors that walk their camels along the beach and they offer camel rides. This is another amazing way to witness Diani Beach. By getting on the top of a camel, getting up super high, the camel's rocking you back and forth, you kind of feel like you're about to fall off, you have the wind blowing on your face, you're getting to see the colors of the sky as the sun is setting, it's so perfect and you have to try it. Number eight, which is take a trip to Robinson Island. Now Robinson Island is a sandbank that's off Diani Beach and depending on the level of the tide is when you can actually get to see it or walk on it. So when they set up the tour to go to the sandbank, it will usually be when the tide is at a certain level. Now when you're being taken to Robinson Island, you'll be taken on something called a glass boat, which is basically a normal boat with a glass attached at the bottom. And and you get to see these fish as you cruise through the water to get to the sandbank. It's amazing. Now, when you're at the sandbank, you can walk on the sand, which is so fine. It feels so good on the feet. I don't even know how to describe it, but it is amazing. And once you're done walking on the sandbank, then you can actually snorkel. And there's this beautiful, really vivid coral. It's just something that you need to witness for yourself. Number seven, which is make a trip to the Colobus Conservation. Now, the Colobus monkeys are these really beautiful black and white monkeys that are unfortunately endangered species. So what the Colobus Conservation does is they are trying to bring the numbers of the Colobus monkeys back up. The reason why they're endangered is because they die through habitat loss, road kills, and a lot of poaching. So at the Colobus Conservation, not only will you be helping the conservation, but you can also get to witness these beautiful monkeys up close while you're walking through this indigenous forest that the conservation is in. It's such a cool forest. Apparently the roots of the trees can't pierce through the coral reef and so they grow out again and become another tree. It's so freaking cool. Cool. So over here you'll get to witness the Colobus monkeys up close. They're a little bit shy so they could run away but they're so cool to see nonetheless. Plus you'll be learning a lot about the conservation efforts and about the indigenous forest and the Colobus monkeys themselves. Last time I went I learned that Colobus monkeys have three stomachs. 
That's insane. Number six is dining at Alibaba's cave. Now, Alibaba's cave, from what I've read, is 120 or 130,000 years old. It's basically a number of coral reefs that have formed this chamber of caves. Now, in this cave, they have a five-star restaurant. The best time to visit is in the night. So you'll have a fine dining experience. They serve seafood, they serve meat, vegetarian. The food is so, so good. And the really cool thing is in the night, they light up these caves with these beautiful ambient lights. And the caves have this natural hole in the ceiling where you can see the sky. And if you're lucky, it will be a starry night sky. It is so beautiful. This would definitely be one of those places that you can visit with your significant other. It's extremely romantic. Number five is Congo River. Now during the evening, grab a tuk-tuk and tell them to take you to a place called Congo River and they'll take you to where the river meets the sea. Now this place is absolutely breathtaking. You have an open view of the west side so you can see the sun setting over the horizon. So on the west side is the river and on the east side is the sea. Now while you're here, you'll see some local people in their little canoes that are made out of the barks of trees. They're really cool. You can ask them to give you a canoe ride for a fee of course and they'll take you into the river where you can watch the sun as it just sets it is so so beautiful and if you just want to sit by the little sandbank that's formed in between the sea and the river make sure to grab a bottle of wine get some wine glasses and that will just be such a perfect experience the last time i went there it was a hidden gem and i made a video about it which got about a hundred thousand plus views so i'm not too sure if it's a hidden gem now but it's still a place that's definitely worth the visit Number four, going to Shimba Hills National Park. Now this is a day trip which will usually be organized by a tour company. The two tour companies that I would recommend are Almasi Travels and Coast Camping. And what will happen is early in the morning, you'll be picked up from your hotel or your accommodation, and then you'll be taken to Shimba Hills National Reserve. Now in the morning itself, you will do a game drive. There's not much to see. You'll see a few impalas here and there. And if you're lucky, you'll get to see some elephants after the game drive you come to a point where you will have to hike down through this beautiful lush green forest um, but you'll be guided by rangers so that you're protected from any buffaloes or elephants that come in your way and you will be hiking down to these beautiful waterfalls called Shadrach Falls which is this really beautiful waterfall the hike to go down is quite simple but coming back up is <sighs> If you're unfit like me, it's kind of tough, but it can be done. And now when you get down to the waterfall, depending on the season, you could have a lot of water flowing, making a really high pool, which you can swim in. And I've heard that during dry season, there's not a lot of water that flows. So you don't get much of a pool, which you can swim in, but you can still witness the beauty of the waterfall. Make sure to find out about that. Once you've completed your hike back up, you'll then be taken to a place called Shimba Green Lodge for lunch. Now, not many views come close to the view that you can get to experience from the infinity pool that this place has it's so breathtaking and if you're lucky you can get to see elephants drinking from the river you can ask the lodge for binoculars so that you can see them from the infinity pool now the food that they serve at this place i would rate it a four out of ten so don't expect much from the food but the view makes it all worth it so definitely check out the shimba hills tour all right, moving on to the top three. Dun, da, da, dun. Starting with number three is camping on the beach. Now, the place that I'm going to recommend where you camp isn't exactly Diani Beach. It's a place called TV Beach, which is a little bit of a drive away from Diani Beach. Now, this is a trip that will require a little bit more of logistics and planning. You'll need to get a taxi that will take you all the way to TV Beach. You need to carry some camping equipment. You can rent tents from uh, TV Beach itself and you can also eat at their restaurant. In my opinion, it's a little bit pricey for a camping trip But it is still relatively affordable But if you want the whole camping experience Then you'll need to figure out how you can take your cooking equipment with you Now the really cool thing about camping on the beach is first of all going to sleep to the sound of the waves the wind blowing and of course the really starry sky it is so beautiful and then when you wake up you're facing the sea and the sun is rising so you open your tent to a beautiful beautiful sunrise over this 
amazing blue water with a fine white sand it's something that's like out of a movie and during low tide if you take a walk along tv beach you'll get to these ocean pools that apparently one of them is the shape of the continent of africa i've not done this part myself and i definitely want to try it the next time i go to uh, tv beach but you can cliff jump right into the pool and i've heard that it's so much fun so that is definitely worth a try be warned though their toilet or shower facilities aren't the best it's more of like a living in the wild style so you'll need to be ready for that number two we're coming close to the end which is make a tour to wasini island again this is a full day tour so you'd have to organize it with a tour company again i would recommend Almasi tours or coast camping and basically what they'll do is early in the morning they'll pick you up from your accommodation and will take you to a place called Shimoni. Now at Shimoni they'll put you on a boat and you'll start making your way to Kisite Mpuguni Marine Reserve. This is basically a small island out in the sea and while you're making your way there you'll get a chance to see dolphins. Hopefully if your captain allows you can snorkel with them and when you finally make it to the marine reserve you'll have a chance to snorkel and the coral over here is something that is out of the movies extremely vivid all the colors of the sea so many different kinds of fish the varieties of coral this is probably the best snorkeling i've ever done in my life and if you're lucky you'll also get dolphins that swim around the area so you'll get to see them wow i i'm out of words on how to explain this place it is truly breathtaking now when you're making your way back you'll be taken to an island called wasini island and over here you'll be served lunch you'll be served a variety of seafood lobster prawns crabs all of it and the really cool part about it is that it's extremely affordable now when you make your way back to shimoni you'll have a chance to go to the shimoni slave caves and you'll basically be guided through this cave which was once used by the arabs to store their slaves before they ship them off to uh, Zanzibar I think so there's a lot of history over there and the caves are kind of spooky you'll see a lot of bats so definitely worth a try all right moving on to number one the one that takes the cake this is deep sea diving in Diani and the reason why this is number one is because I didn't believe it the first time I heard but when I tried it myself Diani has some of the best marine life in the world and when you deep sea dive you can truly appreciate it so I did my deep sea diving with a company called diving the crab and they're extremely professional one of the really cool things that I appreciated about them was they had goggles that were numbered because me without my glasses I'm blind so I didn't even need to wear contact lenses now I was given a refresher course before I was taken out to sea so if you're a beginner they offer those they'll show you everything before they take you out to sea and when they take you to sea they'll take you to different destinations if you're lucky you'll be taken to a shipwreck and the coral the fish it's so beautiful and the crazy part is when i did my trip it was a really gray day but the visibility under the water was so high it was pristine and something that's worth noting is that depending on the season you can get a chance to see whale sharks or humpback whales it's so insane that that is available in diani so i highly highly recommend it now before we end this video i want to make a few mentions of the things that i haven't done but can be done while you're in diani the first and the biggest is you can skydive while you're in diani literally experiencing the beach from the air which sounds really amazing the second is you can rent a quad bike and explore the whole of the inland part of diani and finally the water sports so they offer sports such as jet skiing kite surfing paddle boarding and i really want to try these out myself so i'll be going there very soon to try all of these and i'll be making videos about them along with the other things that i've mentioned so i'm super excited about that so if you're new here and you want to see those make sure to hit the subscribe button thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button it really helps and if you want to learn how to make videos like i do i have a top five uh, videography tips guide right over here so make sure to check that out and with that thank you once again and i'll see you guys in the next one peace